Welcome back, dear friends. Today we are finally getting around to the 19th century corset, which is the second part in our Cinderella dress making series. If you are new to corsetry, I recommend you check out my previous video in which I addressed some basic corset construction and cleared up some misconceptions and myths about corsets. Instead of beginning with a draped fabric pattern, we are going to draft a paper pattern. So there are many different tutorials out there on how to draft a corset pattern, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but I will point out some of the mistakes that I have made when I was playing around with my corset pattern. When you are self-drafting your own corset pattern, it's important that you take a few inches off of your waist measurement. As you will be able to see with my first two mock-ups, I did not do this, and they ended up looking very, very shapeless. Another mistake I made was I was reducing the waist from the pattern quite evenly, when you should be taking most of that reduction out of the side seam. Yes, the corset does squeeze you in a bit, but the reason we do these mock-ups is to make sure that it is 100% comfortable. In this collage of all my mock-ups, you can clearly see that the third mock-up is the most shapely of them all, and this is because I took all the reduction out of the waist measurement. As dramatic as this shape is, I did not really feel any discomfort when I was wearing the corset, and I thought this was a very good sign considering this was my very first time making a corset. Once I was happy with my pattern, I began to cut it out of my fabric. I used a thick cotton for the lining of my corset. You will want to choose a fabric that has little to no stretch. These fabrics can either be a canvas or coutille, or something other of the sort that is just as strong. Once those pieces were cut, I decided to use color-coded pins in order to keep my patterns together. These corset patterns have a lot of wonky and weird shapes, so it's important that you don't get them confused. I then cut my pattern pieces out of a blue charmeuse fabric, which was left over from my Elsa dress. Once again, I would recommend using a stronger fabric, but I just wanted to work with what I had, and it turned out really good, so I guess it didn't matter in the end. Once everything was cut out, I just basted my pieces together attaching the lining to the fashion fabric. Do not baste together the, fir the front two panels because you are going to insert the busk first. So take the right side of your busk and you are going to mark where all the hooks are. And once you're done with that, you're going to stitch down the front of that panel, taking care to skip over those marks you just made. For the opposite panel, you are just going to sew it as is because you will not need any holes in this one. Once you have sewn both panels, you are going to press them open so that they are nice and smooth. The right side of the busk should just slide right in there, and then you are going to pin that in place and mark with a pen all the little holes in those hooks so that we can get the proper placement for the left side of the busk. To make the holes for the pegs, I used a very sharp tool, and I used it to separate the threads and the weave of the fabric. This is important um, that you do not cut the holes because that will make the fabric prone to tearing in the future. So like um, I have said, you just want to separate those fi those uh, fibers. I used the tine of a fork uh, to widen the holes because it was the perfect size for the busk pegs.
then you should just be able to slide the left side of the busk into your um, fabric and just carefully uh, pop the pegs through those holes. To sew in the busk, I am going to attach a zipper foot to my sewing machine. This is optional, but it is really helpful in getting the fabric to tightly hug the busk. It basically is a attachment for your sewing machine that allows you to sew really close to anything, so it helps you sew close to zippers, it helps you sew close to the busk, so I recommend that you do use one. Um, if not, you can still use a regular machine foot, or you can hand sew it if you're that ambitious, but um, a zipper foot really helps. After the busk is attached, we are then going to piece together the entire corset and you're going to do this with the wrong sides facing and it will be covered later with the boning channels. Speaking of which, it is now time to cut the boning channels. On some 19th century corsets, you will see that some boning channels have multiple bones inserted into them, so I will have some triple bones, some double bones, and some single bones. So I ended up cutting some 3 inch wide strips, 2 inch wide strips, and 1.5 and inch wide strips. And as soon as that is finished, we are getting right into pressing. So we are going to iron the boning channels, and we are also going to press open the seams of the corset so we can attach the boning channels. And I have no idea why my camera just flipped, but it did. So <laughs> I marked out the uh, places where I needed to separate the bones. And I stitched on the triple boning channels, and then the double boning channels, and then I finally moved on to all the single boning channels. There were a lot of bones to sew. So as you can see, there are so many boning channels. The next thing I did was harvest the bones from my corset mock-up and trimmed them to the correct size and I also rounded them off with a pair of scissors. I am using sew-through boning which is a very cheap type of boning, um, but it works just as well. The challenge with this boning is it tends to shred if you try to sand it down to smooth it out so the first thing I did was I held it above a candle just to kind of melt the plastic do not stick it in the flame or it will catch fire you just need to hold it a little bit above and the plastic will melt and curl backwards for safety reasons if you're not an adult please get adult supervision to do this as soon as the plastic was softened and melted, I was able to sand it down without too much trouble. In this clip I used a nail file, which you can use, but I found that it wasn't really working as well, so I switched later to sandpaper. I recommend using a 220 grit sandpaper because you really don't need anything that coarse. It's just to smooth off any of those um, extra sharp lumps or whatever that could be left behind on the boning. Now I know I had to do this to 32 bones, which is 64 bone ends, and it seems like a tedious process, but it is very important because you really don't want that stabbing through the fabric and poking you. It could just end really badly, so make sure you do this step. You also want to press your bones flat with an iron so that they don't get all bendy, and then when you're done with that, you can insert them into your corset. Inserting the bones should be fairly easy, and for me, it was quite satisfying. Um, there will be a couple places, well, I can't guarantee, but um, you might find that some places uh, you have sewn the boning channels too narrow. So what I would do is I would just go to that area and just unpick the seam where um, it's a little bit thin, not the entire boning channel, just that little bit, and then insert the bone and then you can hand stitch it or sh machine stitch it up later. 
I was actually quite worried that I did have a few places where my boning channels were too narrow, but um, it just takes a little bit of maneuvering and I eventually got all of my bones through. After the bones were done being inserted, I stitched in a piece of cotton for my waist tape. And I just did this on the thinnest part of the corset. After that was done, I did a tight zigzag stitch on the top and bottom of the corset sides. And this is just to conceal the last bit of those raw edges and to also encase the bones fully so they don't, don't slip out later. I stitched on a piece of cotton to be the binding of my corset. You can do this with a matching fabric, but I noticed in my reference photo that um, it had white binding and I thought that was a really pretty detail. So I basically just machine stitched it to the outside, then flipped it and felled it down on the inside of the corset. Because I thought you didn't want to watch me do um, flossing for three straight hours, I did not film it, but here is a close-up of my flossing. If you would like a more in-depth tutorial, I'd be more than happy to provide you with one. On a lot of corsets, the flossing will actually go through the bones, but I didn't do this, even though I did have sew through boning. I just used a light blue embroidery floss and just stitched across that those bones. Next, I attached some trim, and I just picked this up at Walmart. I thought it was really pretty and it somewhat resembled the trim that was in the reference photo, and I just top stitched that onto the top edge of the corset. And finally, it is time to stop procrastinating putting in those grommets. So I took a ruler and I marked 10 uh, grommet holes, and I did this um, one inch apart. If you're wondering why so many seamstresses absolutely hate putting grommets into their corsets, well, putting in grommets is a little bit tricky if you have never done it before, um, so I would recommend definitely practicing before you insert them onto your corset. First you have to punch it with a little hole punch, and uh, usually it comes with the kit. I would rec recommend using an awl just like before, like I said with the busk, how if you cut the holes they're more prone to wearing and tearing in the future. And um, I had to kind of wiggle around my little hole punch to get it to cut all the way through the fabric. You're going to insert your grommets with the with either like a, a handheld grommet setter or the kind that you hammer. Um, you always want to make sure, and this is very important, this is probably the most important step of setting grommets, is you always want to insert it with the wrong side of the corset facing you. Otherwise, the good side of the grommets will face the inside and the ugly side will face the outside. And just make sure that you don't make that mistake, because I've made it a couple times with my uh, hair and pants and it's just, uh, it's not very good. Um, hammering grommets is quite loud, so... Uh, this is why I'm in my basement. You probably noticed how dark it is, um, but I did it in my basement because one, it was a little bit quieter to hammer grommets down there, and two, because of the hard concrete floor. It really helps to have a hard surface when hammering in grommets because you really uh, need that to help the grommets go in easier. If you are interested in the grommet kit that I'm using, don't be. It sucks. It is really not good quality. It was really cheap, and um, when I insert my grommets, they they don't have the little notches cut into them, so when they split, they split unevenly, and I get these sharp edges that poke out. So I had to go in with my hammer and some pliers and just maneuver the metal until it was finally, like, um, safe to use. Uh, you just don't want to hurt yourself, and you also don't want it to cut your laces. Another very important thing is to make sure that your grommets are very, very secure in there. You're going to want to maybe give them a little extra taps with the hammer, otherwise they're going to fall out. I did have to replace one of my grommets on my corset when I was done because when I laced it up, it did, um, one of the grommets did pop out. Alright, now we can finally lace the corset. I am using some gold paracord, one because it's very strong, and two, I, I've i had it just lying around my room for a long time and I was like, hey, this would make a great corset lace. Uh, anyway, so 
You're going to start from the bottom and insert the laces backwards and you're going to uh, take them and just make sure that they are even on both sides. And then you're going to start crisscrossing the lace and have the, th uh, the thread or the ribbon face directly into the grommet. And you're just going to keep crisscrossing. We are lacing our corset with the bunny ears method and this is because it is the easiest way to lace a corset because it evenly distributes uh, the laces. When you, when you lace it up you're going to be pulling from the middle so that it laces evenly on the top and bottom. So once you reach halfway up your corset you're going to take your, your cord or ribbon and you are actually going to crisscross it but this time you're going to come up and under um, through the grommet and you're going to do that on both sides of course. And then once you're done with that, you're going to take your lace and you're going to um, insert it back into the corset and you're going to do that into the grommet that is directly above the one that you just went through. And this is where you get your two bunny ears. Once you have laced your bunny ears, you're just going to go back and continue crisscrossing the laces until you get to the top. Once you've reached the top, just tie that in a very tight knot and you're going to kind of play around with the laces until they're all evenly uh, distributed and laced across the entire corset.